Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let me introduce the properties of the electromagnetic radiation, very, very simple ones in a few minutes, essentially to bring to your recollection that the electromagnetic radiation consists of oscillating waves of electric and magnetic fields. The electric and magnetic fields oscillate perpendicular to each other and are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the radiation. As you see here, the directions of the oscillations of the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. You see this in the animation that it is also perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. The electric field is in a very simple form is given by the cosine. electric field oscillating in the x axis as you see it is cosine k z minus omega t wave vector angular frequency we will see it in a few minutes. The magnetic field is oscillating in the y direction again with the same oscillation frequency and the direction of the oscillation, the blue lines tell you one field, the red lines tell you the oscillations in the other, both of which are perpendicular to the direction of propagation that is the z axis. It is a very slow animation, but electromagnetic radiation travels at the speed of light, which obviously we cannot do here, but please understand that the fields, the red lines, the oscillations and the blue lines are perpendicular to each other and or perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Okay. Let us define some units that we need to use in spectroscopy. Okay. When we draw the amplitude of a wave, amplitude of a wave with against say the position. Okay. So, you can write the wave as a position as a sin 2 pi by lambda x as a simple wave which we can write in terms of a sine wave and so on it keeps repeating. The maximum amplitude is A and the wavelength lambda is basically the distance between the two crests. This is lambda or the two troughs which I have not drawn here. You can start from this point this repeating point okay. is typically that is when you put x is equal to lambda, okay. see that this is one full oscillation. Okay. So, the wavelength lambda is the distance between two successive repeating points, this, that, this if you draw this further and if you connect to this between this and that the wavelength. That is a periodic oscillation. The frequency of nu usually it is design, defined by denoted by nu. The frequency nu of a wave is the number of such oscillations in unit time, number of oscillations in unit time. For usually per second, number of 
oscillations per second. The wave number is defined as the number of waves in unit length. in unit length. Even though I said we will use the classical picture of the electromagnetic radiation as waves, please remember that the Einstein's relations for the electromagnetic radiation as a photon, if you recall, the energy is given by E is equal to H nu, where H is Planck's constant. and its unit in joules if I have to give is 6.626 times 10 raised to minus 34 joule second. The, the P is equal to H nu tells you that nu is the frequency and if you write the relation between the frequency and the wavelength, the speed of light is nu lambda which is uh, a constant in vacuum and it is the maximum that you can think of as the speed of any information or object. E is therefore given by H C by lambda and if you write this as H C into 1 by lambda, which tells you the number of waves per unit length. If lambda is the wave length, the inverse of lambda tells you the number of waves per unit length and therefore this is often denoted by its own unit called the H C nu bar. So, this is the basic relation, this is the relation that one has to remember between the energy of the wave, the frequency of the wave, the wave length of the wave and the wave number of the wave. This is a relation which we will keep in mind and these are all defined with the appropriate units here in the transfer in these uh, transparencies. The wavelength is the distance between two adjacent crests or troughs of a wave and has the dimension of length. The frequency is the number of waves that pass a given point in unit time interval and has the dimension number per unit time and therefore you have T inverse and the wave number is the number of waves in a unit length of dimension. Uh, unit per unit length and the relation is what I have written namely the Planck's constant H relates the energy of the wave to all these parameters. Therefore, when you talk about the property of the wave, the property of the wave is nu or lambda or nu bar, one and the same it is just a different ways of expressing them, it is only one property, the extent to which it oscillates or the length. Let us talk about the interaction of radiation, how radiation interacts with matter qualitatively. Recall from the previous few minutes that the electromagnetic radiation consists of an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field. These are the two components that the radiation has. Therefore, these are the two quantities which can interact with matter. The electric component of the radiation may interact with an electrical oscillation that takes place in a molecule. For example, if a molecule rotates about an equilibrium axis, any temperature above 0 Kelvin, the molecule has a rotational degree of freedom more than 1, often 2 or 3 degrees of rotational degrees of freedom that is the energies associated with that. The rotations may change the dipole moment in the sense the dipole moment being a vector pointing in a certain direction may undergo rotation about the direction of uh, the axis of rotation. So, there is an oscillating, there is a property which is changing, an electrical property which is changing in the molecule. If that change is synchronized with the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, particularly the electrical property, see the interaction of the electric dipole moment of the molecule with the electric oscillations of the electromagnetic radiation, that is one possible interaction. The other is of course, the magnetic component 
interacting with the magnetic moment of the molecule. So, these are the two interactions at what you call at the linear level or at uh, the when the energy of radiation is not too high or when the intensity of radiation is not too high. These are the two properties and these both of these interactions are directly responsible for the property the spectrum that you see. The range is of course over 15 orders of magnitude that is from the radio frequency to the x-rays. Now, microwave spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, electronic spectroscopy all of which are usually called optical spectroscopy. The electric property of the radiation is important in the interaction with the electric properties of the molecule. The magnetic resonance spectroscopy which is from the radio waves to microwaves often and when it when we consider the electrons the magnetic uh, interactions require sometimes the uh, microwave power. So, if you look at that the magnetic resonance property concerns with the, the magnetic uh, properties of the molecule. So, there are two basic divisions to the electromagnet to the molecular spectroscopy that is the optical spectroscopy or what we conventionally call as molecular spectroscopy and then there is the magnetic resonance spectroscopy which is nuclear magnetic resonance or nuclear uh, or electron paramagnetic resonance or electron spin resonance and so on there are these are two divides. Okay. Now, when we say that the range of the radiation is 15 orders of magnitude let us see what they mean. First let us examine the electromagnetic radiation uh, from the point of view of the increasing energy of radiation. You recall that the energy of radiation is proportional to the frequency as given by the Einstein formula. Okay. So, here a table is given where approximate frequency ranges and wavelengths and wave numbers are given. In fact, if I give you the frequency you should be able to write down immediately the corresponding wavelengths and also the wave numbers using the formula that I showed just a few minutes ago. So, the type of radiation that you see here is organized from the highest energy radiation namely cosmic rays whose frequency seems to be greater than or about that 10 raised to 20 per second. You might recall that per second in frequency units is called the hertz and this is 10 raised to 20 hertz or more. The gamma rays which are often produced from the nuclear decay fall in the frequency range of 10 raised to 20 to 10 raised to 18 around 3 orders of magnitude you have gamma rays. And the corresponding wavelengths if you look at nanometers that is 10 raised to minus 9 meters what you see here is 10 raise to minus 3 nanometers to 10 to the minus 1 nanometer or in terms of wave numbers if you consider them as centimeter inverse these are the common units used in spectroscopy the wave number is 10 to the 10 10 to the 8 this is the range. X-rays are next lower in energy 10 raise to 18 to 10 to the 16 in frequency units and correspondingly for the wavelength and wave number. Ultraviolet rays we are uh, told often that ultraviolet rays is what causes the skin cancer and the ozone layer uh, surrounding the earth when it is punctured ultraviolet rays enter. We also use ultraviolet rays for various spectroscopic techniques you see that the frequency range is approximately 10 to the 16 per second or 10 to the 16 hertz to 10 to the 14 hertz. Visible light is in the range it is a very very narrow range of the electromagnetic spectrum from the violet which is at the ultraviolet to the red which is near the infrared violet indigo blue green yellow orange red which is our standard spectrum is a very small range of frequencies. And 
correspondingly in the wavelengths and in the wave numbers. In the wave numbers typically they are from uh, 30,000 centimeter inverse, 10,000 centimeter inverse to 30,000 centimeter inverse and the infrared light is lower in energy again by this order 10 to the 14 uh, hertz to 10 raised to 12 hertz. Then comes of course microwave and radio wave is the lowest uh, in energy in terms of frequencies that you see that this is the smallest number. And so this is the spectrum that you talk about between 10 raised to 20 in terms of frequencies to 10 raised to 8. So 12 to 12 to 14 orders of magnitude. UV visible and IR regions in terms of wave numbers, I have given a small table here. These are all approximate numbers, I mean there is no clear cut division between far UV and near UV. This is a temporary range, approximately accurate, I mean correct range 10 days to 6 to 50,000 centimeter inverse. Likewise for near UV, visible, near IR, mid IR and far IR. The reason for this tabulation is that in each one of these ranges, the molecular properties that we will be able to study, the molecular properties which are responsible for the spectrum to appear in that region, they are different. And therefore, we should also know when we are looking for a certain spectrum, when we are examining a certain spectrum, what type of interpretation that we should have in terms of the corresponding molecular properties. So in the table below, I give you the uh, radiation that is used to study the corresponding properties of the molecule. For example, when you talk about radio frequency range, which is the lowest in energy in the electromagnetic radiation in molecular spectra, the properties that one studies are nuclear magnetic dipole moments. I talked about the magnetic resonance imaging, that is one of the most well known applications of the medical field. In fact, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is perhaps the most important spectroscopy technique that chemists use. It is possible to interpret using the radio frequency spectroscopy magnetic dipolar interactions in molecules in solids. The coupling between nuclear magnetic moments called the spin-spin coupling, the nuclear quadrupole moments etc. All these things are the properties that one can study using radio frequency spectroscopy. Using microwave spectroscopy, one can obtain exact molecular geometries or very accurate molecular geometries by interpreting the spectrum and deriving molecular moments of inertia. Properties called the rotation constants which are related to the moments of inertia. And through the rotation constants and inertia, equilibrium structure of the molecule, why for example, uh, methane is tetrahedral, uh, ethane is tetrahedral, but there are two CH3 groups. The structure as well as the shape of the molecule, the molecular electric dipole moment, if it has an electric dipole moment or it does not have electric dipole moment, we can interpret from the, the spectrum, the, the type of spectrum from the microwave region the electronic magnetic dipole moment etc. All these things are derivable by the spectra using microwave spectroscopy. Using infrared spectroscopy, one can understand what happens to the bond strength or what is the order of magnitude of bond strengths, the force constants which are responsible for the, the bonds which are responsible for the binding of the molecules, how strong they are, how weak they are, what is the quantitative value associated with that and the extent to which the molecule is polarizable or dipole moments can be induced when you put the molecule in an electric field. All these things can be studied using infrared spectroscopy. When you use UV visible electromagnetic radiation, the properties of molecules that one can derive are electronic dipole moments, dissociation energies, luminescence properties, fluorescence properties of molecules. Phosphorescence properties, for example, the screen that you are watching this perhaps is an example of the phosphorescence properties that you uh, want to know. They are studied using the UV visible region and the X-ray region enables us to understand the surface properties of solids, 
various surfaces, interfaces and characterizing the interfaces and also the core electron energies of atoms and molecules. And gamma ray region is much higher in energy enables us to understand special, special properties like the chemical shift or the isomer shifts, nuclear quadrupole moments, etc. So as you see that when you use different types of radiation, you study different properties of the same molecule. Let me give you an example of what this all of these things mean by just giving you two or three spectra of the same molecule for different spectroscopic methods. For example, the nuclear magnetic resonance spectrum. All this 1 H NMR means it is proton, uh, the atomic number, the nuclear magnetic resonance spectrum of benzene here. This is the atomic weight. The proton NMR spectrum of benzene contains only one line. The infrared spectrum of the same molecule, now we use different radiation, different electromagnetic radiation and different concept. See that the infrared spectrum of the molecule, this is the intensity transmission, this is transmittance instead of absorbance, this is the light transmitted and then you have the wave number here, the wave number decreases this way and you have spectral patterns similar to what I drew, namely that there is a very characteristic spectrum which is very different from the corresponding uh, NMR spectrum of the same molecule. The UV visible spectrum of benzene, for example, this is at very low resolution, what you see is almost the absorbance here is plotted, you see that this is the pattern of the absorbance versus the wavelength. The absorbance is maximum at a particular point and then it sort of tapers off at different uh, wavelengths. So the spectrum that we talk about is obtained when the intensity of radiation absorbed or emitted is plotted as a function of the frequency or wavelength and as I told you in the very beginning that there are these three features, the line widths, the line positions and the line intensities. These are the three characteristic quantities of any molecular property, any molecular system that we want to understand in each of these spectrum. 